So I think one thing you'll know from my dark cleaning video and how much I profess that even a dart like this over here that's been fired so many times that the dart is actually faded and the foam stays on there. How I am all about gluing with clean surfaces. Now this is out of a blaster which had lubrication on it, had a lubricant all over the place, and in order to get a good joint with epoxy, not that this is going to bond perfectly with epoxy, but you'll see like the surfaces in here, they bond. You'll see when, you, when, when I got it. How I, these need to be clean. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a small dab. You can use any soap but shampoo. Do not use shampoo. Okay? I'm going to take a small dab of all detergent. Okay? I'm going to put it around this point. I'm going to put it around all this point right here. And then I'm going to wait for this water to get a little hotter. And I'm gonna I'm gonna sink them for about ten minutes. All right, so here we are, ten minutes later, and we've got the two pieces right here that are soaking in uh, clear all detergent. This is really good for dart heads. It took me three cycles on Mark Stars to actually get all the silicone off. As where when I used one with dyes and perfumes in them, it took seven. And it made this white staining that was very hard to get off. I did get it off, but I started to realize a friend's advice that um, the dyes actually react to wax like styrene does to wax. And it makes this white kind of chalky kind of film. But if you don't have the dyes, which by the way is a, is a type of a, uh, it is a type of, of a compound known as thioacetone, uh, just like they use in perfumes and real perfumes and everything. They use a, a thioacetone or a derivative of thioacetone. And what it does is it will get into your wax and it will carry whatever scented agent in there and it will chalk it up. That's what this didn't happen. He was totally right. Yes, this is where my friend works at Scott Works. <laughs> Lockheed, okay? He's, he's, he's a brilliant guy. Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to rinse this off. Do we really have to be this anal retentive? You want to be in my league? Yes, you do. Okay, I'm gonna let that cap dry off. I don't want to put water in my detergent. And I'm gonna rinse this off right here. Prepping the, oh yeah, there's no oils on that now. That's nice. I'm gonna prep the surfaces for, uh, I'm prepping the surfaces to epoxy this. I'm going to take a towel, I'm going to dry these, because we have some of the hardest water in the world. So what do you do? Our next move is to prep this for epoxying. To epoxy it, I'm going to need um, the top of a box. I'm going to need a flat surface to squeegee it with. Sometimes I've even used razor blades. I'm going to need a flat surface to squeegee this with. You know, at some point, I can't use it on film, obviously, or people would get really mad if like it was inappropriate. Uh, at one point, I actually just to used to straighten out my darts that were drying. I use ads for hookers <laughs> that I actually picked up from Las Vegas. I thought I was going to collect them just to be funny. And I said, nah, these are bullshit. I'm getting rid of these. But at any who, <laughs> I use actual ads for hookers. Okay. So any flat surface will work. It's by a credit card, whatever. Um, but you need something to spread this out. Now I'm going to take my two-part epoxy. This is the two-part epoxy you buy from Home Depot. Right here. Part A and part B. All right. You 
What I do is I put a glob of pot B right there. And then I put a pot glob of pot A right next to it. I don't mix them just yet. I make sure the two beads are very close together in size. If they're not, I put a little more like that on there and then I close them. No more, no more. Okay. So, with this, I'm going to take this. I have to act fast when I do this. Take this. Take this. And I'm going to take some Teflon tape. Ah, get off my fucking finger. And I'm going to wrap it around my pleasure head. After I have this wrapped around here, I take my squeegee that I've homemade. I have my plunger rod already all set up, all oriented. Yes. Okay. And I squeegee those two sides of the epoxy together. You'll see the epoxy start to white, uh, start to cloud up. That indicates that the mixture is mixed together. You could use something like a 20 minute epoxy if you wanted to, but what you'll notice is that, what you'll notice is that then you're holding this together for like 20 minutes. Not fun. I'm going to take the head of this right here, and I'm going to put epoxy around this. Put in mind, epoxy doesn't bond to any of these surfaces. What it more is, get out of here, hair. God, I, the one thing about having long hair, right there, is hair gets in your way a lot of times. It, it's more interlocking. So, now I'm going to put my spring back on, as so. I'm going to fill this up with epoxy, as so. And I am going to put that in. Now I'm going to hold this with my fingers together as so while this whole thing sets. Put in more epoxy in the front. Okay, so now that it is at least physically, um, it's at least physically dry, it's a little tacky as you can see, but this isn't gonna slosh around in here. I put it in my, uh, my glass right here, and I, uh, I, let, it, I let it further, uh, further cure. Um, I want to orient it a little better. I'll take my broken, um, my broken uh, sentinel priming rod there, and I'll let this sit like this overnight. Okay, so I have it like this. So you can notice that there's little particles of air right there. Um, that's just from mixing. What you want to look for are big, huge voids, like in between the rivets, inside of there. Uh, that will compromise the strength of it. And also make sure that it cures, completely hardens. Right now it's, it's not hardened, as you can see. It's just, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's dry, but it's not set. You want to make sure this is completely cured overnight before flattening this out with a file and uh, testing it. All right, so let's see here. Screw, screw, screw. Okay. So there it is right there. I'm going to pop plunger, uh, plunger tube out first. Uh, take out my uh, my setup right there. Okay. I'm going to take the catch spring off of this because this is the same catch spring I'm going to, the same type of catch spring I'm going to use. But look at that. Look how heavy built that is. Wow. But you can see how it's got the same design principles. It's just different springs, that's all. Uh, different springs. The outer spring is much more powerful, and the inner spring is a Singapore spring, whereas that's an orange Modworks 5K in there and, a, and, a, uh, uh, and an HPI Red Hellfire. Okay, so I'm going to put this in. Now, it, it doesn't go all the way to the front right now, but it will. Watch.
Okay. There's a few things I'm going to look out for. Okay, so now it's all the way in. You can see the spring is all the way compressed as far up as the plunger rod can go. Okay? That's about as far up as it can go. i get my little tube of grease here. Um, I'm going to grease up my, uh, my ZDS barrel. This is my ZDS barrel. Graham, Graham Scott actually built a really, really, I mean, even I, I believe in the nicer than this one. He did a really, really good job. So, this, I might be able to get this fill on film. I might not. This gets a little gruesome trying to get all this spring force from one little past pistol. But I will try to get this on film. It's just, it is not easy to do. So, I am not guaranteeing anything. Okay. There we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, on this spring, you want to put this inside the frame, that part, so it doesn't roll out. Okay, there you go. Just gotta make sure that I am not grinding my 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 uh, my spring plate is not grinding. Okay, all right. Mhm. Mm mhm. That's gonna be falsely advertising for a little while, but this is all in the sake of testing. I pretty much test everything I, I put out. All the stuff I build is built by me. It ain't no snake oil. It's good stuff. I wouldn't sell it if I didn't think I could make it better. Or if I didn't think it was good. Snake oil. I'm actually thinking of uh, making that the theme of my, uh, of my Merlin, actually. Uh, like giving it like a kind of an Old West kind of packaging. You know, like... Like, Grandpa, Murray snake oil. Yeah, it will cure warts, disease, even cancer. Even the cancer, you know, just, just to be, hey, I almost do that almost perfectly. And I ain't even from the South. So first, let's try, let's try an FNJ through this thing. Uh, 1.1 gram FNJ. And you'll see that it actually likes more back pressure. It likes to, to have more weight to it because the, the power is so instantaneous on an ultra match. 186 feet per second. Okay, let's fire another FNJ through there. Ready? Sit. 191 feet per second. So you see that it likes, actually likes tighter foam. It has more back pressure to it. And this ain't no snake oil we're selling here. As a matter of fact, I think that's going to be the Merlin packaging. It's actually snake oil. I think that's kind of, kind of be funny. Not to pick on anybody, but you know. People, you know, I doubted, as, as close as a year back, I doubted that rifling would ever work in a blaster. Well, I'm starting to see it. I'm experimenting with it. I see it working my other blasters and some of my other customers too. But, you know, I mean, if I were to hear somebody say, yeah, that works. I understand I understand. I, I'll be the same way. I understand. All right. So there we go. An ACC prototype dart. Right, let's see how fast is it going to be. Ready? Sit. 153. I think these are heavier. I think the ACC prototype darts are a lot heavier. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But nonetheless, I'll tell you that, um, uh, uh, you know, certain darts like certain blasters better, and that's how it works. So, um, so yeah, good blaster. I mean, a pistol, a, 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 a fire strike pistol that can shoot at paw with a uh, Singapore uh, long shot. That's pretty good. One, six, four. So you see how the lighter darts are actually slower in this than the heavier darts. And I'm not saying the heavy is darts work, but I'm definitely saying like um, the FNJs, because they have a little more heft to them, and they have this grippy, grippy green foam. It likes it a lot. See, that, that, that was the other X dart did 153 feet per second right there. See? So... In reality, the best things to shoot through an ultra match 
for accuracy are your hand glue darts, but also just the, the FNJs with this really sticky green foam. I found the best luck with the fire strikes, uh, with the ultra match fire strikes and the pink crushes. I found that this foam, it's like the zombie strike foam, actually works better than uh, even the explorer dart foam, than even my, I mean on my long shots, the hand glue darts work a hundred times better. On my, my pistols, my high end pistols, the hand glue darts with the yellow foam work better. But on the Ultra Match, because it's such a short distance and it likes to gather up as much back pressure as it can to fire it, it you're actually better with green foam. The Nerf Freaks! <laughs> so, at any rate, we're going to compare this to the 16K setup that I'm making for Graham and sending it to Australia. There we go. See? So on average, it does about, I would say, 190. You know? It, but you get those peaks, which are really fast, like that, and it's, it's really good. 